So we've got an interesting little thought experiment here. Uh, this is the Earth, and uh, this is you, or a person, standing on the surface of the Earth. Now the interesting thing to compare is what your force due to gravity will be uh, compared to the centripetal force required uh, to keep you spinning at the rate that the Earth is spinning. Okay. So the Earth completes one revolution in a time of 24 hours, which is 24 times, uh, in fact we should call this capital T because it's one period, isn't it? 24 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds to give us the time in seconds. And I'm not going to calculate that just now. Uh, and the distance around the outside of the Earth is 2 pi r, with r being the radius being around about 6,000, what's that, 600 kilometers, 6,000, which is, if we're going to calculate the distance in meters, SI units, it's 2 times pi times by 6,000, thousand or 6 million, and that gives us the distance. Now, why do we calculate those? Um, is to find the velocity for our mv squared over r um, reaction because velocity is distance over time and we know the distance for one complete rotation um, is whatever we just calculated down here and uh, the time is one period t which is from over here so oops, I wasn't meant to do that um, so what we can do is rewrite our expression for the centripetal force um, to be the the mass uh, of the person, which we'll just say, for example, is 100 kilograms. I'm sure you're not 100 kilograms. I'm pretty close to that, but uh, uh, for the sake of easy figures to calculate with, so m times v, which we decided was the distance over time, uh, which was 2 pi r divided by the time period, capital T, so mv squared, so we've got to square all of that, and divide that by the radius of the Earth, which is 6,000. So that should give us a number, um, which will be comparable to this number over here. If the mass times gravity is 100 times roughly 10, again to keep it simple, that says that the force due to gravity is 1,000 newtons, and we want to compare that to see our centripetal force here. Now just something interesting, if the centripetal force required towards the centre of the Earth is, is less than, uh, well let's put it, is greater than the force due to gravity, then we would be slipping and sliding over the surface of the Earth as it spun underneath us, going around and around. There wouldn't be enough force to keep, help, to make us keep up with um, the rotation of the Earth. Um, but let's just follow through and see what we end up with. Um, I'm, I'm going to run out of space, so I'm just going to shift this all across to substitute our numbers in. Uh, the mass of uh, the person is 100 kilograms, times by this part in the brackets, 2 times pi times the radius, again it's 6. 3 over the period, which was 24 times 60 times 60, and that's all squared, and we divide that by... Uh, the radius of the Earth, which is again 600,000. If we plug all of that into our calculator, we find that it's somewhere around 3 newtons, which is very, very small compared to our original 1,000 newtons up here. Okay, so uh, from this we can gather that, uh, yes, the um, centripetal force is very small compared to the force due to gravity and that means that uh, the force due to gravity is more than enough than enough to um, keep us fixed to the surface of the earth as it rotates around uh, on its axes. <coughs> now, uh, interestingly enough uh, compared to the size of the earth the velocity it rotates at 
um, is almost indistinguishable. When you're turning a corner on a car, um, and go back to this little diagram over here, um, the car is quite large in size relative to the radius of curvature. Um, so at low velocities you can really feel that centripetal force pulling you in and you try and lean with it so that you, uh, well, that's you have to look at the centrif centrifugal force versus centripetal force video to understand why all of that's happening. But uh, on the scale of the Earth, so if this is now uh, the Earth with a person standing on it, um, you just don't notice, uh, you're much, much smaller compared to the radius of curvature. And so this 3 newtons is almost indistinguishable. Um, you don't really feel it compared to your, uh, your weight. And um, the force required for turning the corner on a car is much more. You can do a calculation for that using FC equals mv squared over r to test that out too. Um, so there's some interesting thought experiments.